right. Hey, Mike, thank you for joining the show. Man, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, and I look forward to jamming. I I, uh, I always love good conversation and and getting like getting dirty and really uh, yes. exposing all the the good stuff and and setting some souls on fire. Yeah, and this is going to be a high energy conversation. I can already feel that. So I gotta get. I mean, I gotta get mentally ready for this one. So this is going to be good. So um, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, you had a lot of success in your career, whether it's 15 years in uh, the, you know, the executive field with Fortune 500 companies, mm-hmm. or whether it's creating your own business, um, Inner Wealth Global. So I guess let's start with your beginnings and kind of how you uh, basically manifested everything to where, uh, to where you are now. Awesome. So a, a lot of a, a lot of success, but there was also some collapse blended in too, and and that's that's just as important part of the story. Um, man, I I was an awful high school student. I was I was like, have you ever heard that the A the A students work for the B students, the C students own the company, and the D students are the ones who invest, who are the investors in the businesses, right? So, um, anyway, I I was an awful awful high school student, and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, and. I I, I graduated. I, I I bumped around in some you know five dollar an hour jobs for a while. And then I joined the United States Marine Corps, and and it, that's where the success really started for me. I got promoted fast. I got promoted easily. Uh, I was you know the sergeant of the color guard. I was the uh, number one non commissioned officer in in my division. So really, the success started building way back then. But but I want to uh, let my first book is titled The Imposter in Charge. I think it's really important to understand that. I didn't know why I was successful and I didn't feel successful. And I I felt like it was like, it was all a lie. And as soon as they found out that I wasn't as good as they were saying that I was, or I, they were promoting me and they were like, I was getting like awarded, you know, awards and, and recognized. And I, I felt none of it. it. That's, that's the most important part of this whole success journey. So, you know, I kept getting promoted and, and decorated and I, and I just like, look, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of the Marine Corps before they figure out that I, I'm a fraud. Oh, I right? am. Yeah. So, yeah. So then I, then I got out of the, the Marine Corps and I went into corporate America and, and it, it, was, it was very, very odd that like the first week on the job when I'm in a conference room and, and we haven't, we're having a team meeting and, and they stop the meeting and say, Mike, what do you think? Like, like I had some authority or whatever. Like I knew what I was talking about, but that never stopped. And that's, that's followed me like everywhere I've gone. It's like, turn the microphone to Mike. Let's give him a voice. Let's make sure he, you know, he's part of this conversation. And there was almost like some, some leadership that was handed over, right? It's like you could feel leadership, but I never felt any of it. I, I didn't feel any of it. And I didn't understand why people thought I was talented and why I kept getting recognized. And I, I started ascending the ladder of corporate America and I got my, my MBA funded and I got education and I got flown all over the place for job interviews. And, and, you know, when we moved from, I did two corporate moves, my family moved from Maryland to Oregon, Oregon to St. Louis is where we right outside of St. Louis is where we live. And we got courted. I mean, we got courted. I, I, you know, they put us up in the, you know, presidential suite in the grand Renaissance. And, hey, you know, hey. when they, when they were trying to bring, bring us into a, into an organization, I mean, really red carpet stuff. And the whole time I'm like, Oh my God, if they ever knew what was happening like if they ever knew how bad i was and how flawed and how inadequate and if they ever knew how scared i was they would never be doing any of this stuff and and again i just kept riding this ladder and then it all like after a, a really really nice run in corporate uh where i was like in the in the chief seat in the captain seat of a 350 million dollar organization with hundreds of people you know in in my organization after a long successful run i became 300 pounds i was drinking to toxic levels uh my my, my family was in a, a mental and emotional chaos. There was an abusive environment, physical, mental, emotional uh, abuse at home. Um, I, I hated myself. I hated my job. I hated my life. I was scared and I couldn't tell anybody. I felt fake. I felt like a fraud. I, I didn't want to go to work. My wife was in active pharmaceutical addiction. I mean, there was nothing after like <laughs> literally the, I had, I had exceeded my capacity for pain to a high level and I got Got, like terminated from from a, an exec a, a, an executive level oh, wow. position, and then that was in 2014. And I, I I 
found another job, right? Six months later, I was, I was employed again. And then I was with that organization for 15 months before I got terminated. Because again, there was like nothing that was aligned in my life, nothing going well. It's like everything that had gotten me to a successful place in my life, it, it like, it stopped happening because I, I stopped believing in myself at all and everything collapsed. And that's an important part of this conversation, an important part of this story. So one thing I've always loved, the only thing I ever loved in the Marine Corps and in my time in corporate America was developing people and developing teams. It was all I cared about. I didn't care about the PL. I didn't care about you know, processes and I didn't care about products. I didn't care about supply chain. I didn't give a shit about any of it. The only thing I loved was developing people and developing teams. And there was a part of me that always wanted to be an entrepreneur and always wanted to be a business owner, my own business owner. And I just never let myself give myself permission to do that. It's almost like a blessing in disguise because like, like the universe, life, God, whatever, whatever you want to call it is looking out for you. Right. And it's saying, yeah, you're not choosing what's right for you. So let me choose it for you. And it's like that old life had to go away. So it all fell apart. And it, I mean, it literally collapsed and I filed for divorce. We're, we're still married. We put our marriage back together, right? So my yeah. wife is out of pharmaceutical addiction. I'm out of addiction. We're, 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 yeah, I started a business. I, I lost a hundred pounds, started building my self-value, my self-worth, my, my, my belief in myself started to crystallize. And I really started understanding what was happening in my mind and my body because my, my, my mind was a liability. It was full of worry, doubt, and fear. And it was full of, you know, I mean, it was full of so much hatred and vitriol and, and, and just self-inflicted punishment. And I didn't understand what was happening. I just thought that's what, you know, that's just how human beings live. Right. But anyway, that created the, the, the imposter syndrome and all that, all that mess. Well, in March of 2016, I got fired from the second, second, uh, executive level position. I started my journey of self-mastery, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, improvement on a daily basis, just like making sure that I was taking care of the vessel that, you know, that I had and, and making sure that I was disciplining my mind and, and that I was understanding my emotions and understanding the, the pain that was trapped inside and understanding how to harness the goodness of me. And then I started like shining a spotlight on my talents and seeing, you know, what everybody was seeing in me all those years. And the fact that my voice is powerful and it's inspirational and I can get the best out of people and I can motivate people and I can motivate teams and I can spot talent from a million miles away and I can help someone with that talent harvest the very best of themselves. And I could always do that at a world-class level. I just, I thought since I felt like an imposter, I thought if I could do it, anybody can do it. And I thought if I was good at public speaking, then anybody could do it. And I thought if if I was good at writing, anybody could do it. And I thought all the things that I was really, really good at, they were just average because I thought if I thought so little of myself, if I can do it, anybody can do it. The point is, is I decided in 2016, after I pulled the 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 barrel of the gun out of my mouth and, and I didn't take my own life, I decided to never do anything that I hated ever again. And right now I'm a I'm a published author. I'm a speaker. I'm a, I'm an executive level coach. I work with some executive level and, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners is six, seven, eight, nine figure folks, helping them make sure that they don't lose themselves on the journey of creating wealth and success in their life too. Cause that happiness component matters, but that happiness is really, really tied to your own belief in yourself and your understanding that you're just as significant as every other single human being on the planet and equally as valuable and worthy. And you can just like be yourself and let it rip. And uh, when you choose to be yourself, everybody else kind of like, like accepts you for who you are too. Wow. I mean, first off, thank you for sharing. That's awesome. I mean, just an incredible story. And, and you don't hear that very often. I mean, you don't hear people getting to the, not necessarily the top top, but getting to those executive positions and basically losing everything and yeah. having to kind of start over and reinvent yourself. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. And it's like, gosh, like where do I want to give every part of that uh, a few minutes here, but I would go with, you know, the first part is, okay, so you founded you know, your own company, Inner Global yeah. Wealth, correct? Inner Global Inner Wealth. Inner Wealth Global. Inner Wealth Inner Global. Wealth Global. There you go. Yeah. I had it right the first time. Uh, okay. Inner Wealth Global. So what is that company exactly that you founded? Yeah. So listen, it's a personal and professional development company. And really, our mission is one thing, to make the world a more loving place. So I want to start there. 
to make the world a more loving place. And, and the way we do that is if you don't love yourself, then this world is suffering because of that. The more a human being falls head over heels, absolutely like unconditionally in love with themselves and who they are, the world prospers because of that. Because when you love, and I get emotional, when you love yourself at a very, very deep and magical level, you give that love away to everybody and everything. It almost moves through the, like the, it almost moves through the universe and everyone else feels it. The butterfly effect is real, right? When I go to the grocery store, people can feel my love for myself. When I go to, when I'm with my family and my, my wife and my beautiful wife, and my, my, my two girls, and when I'm with my clients, when I'm with friends, when I'm out in the public, they, they can just, they can feel the love that oozes out of my, my pores. And we leave everybody better than we found them. Like, in, in that situation. But going back to my story is when you hate yourself at a very, very deep level, you see pain everywhere. And when you see pain everywhere, you tend to inflict more pain on the world. And you tend to like, whatever you're feeling inside, you, you tend to give, that's your gift to the world. If like hurt people, hurt people, but people that love themselves at a very, very deep level, they give a lot of love away and they love hard and they love unconditionally. And what we do, man, is we work my company, we work with people to really understand that true wealth is inside of them. It's locked inside mm -hmm. of them. It's inside. Yeah. It's not outside of you. Real wealth is is not outside of you. So the reason I say this is because um, I worked with a with a guy, eight and nine figure guy. I mean, this guy was like teetering on eight and nine figures, and he felt absolutely broken. He felt absolutely broke. Right, high net worth like seven figures liquid in his bank account oh. at any given time. The point is, is he felt absolutely broke because like broke financially broke because his mind was broken. His, his relationship with money in his mind was broken. That he wasn't broken. He wasn't broke, but the way he perceived his value, his identity his significance, his adequacy, his safety, his security, the way he perceived these things had him trapped in, in this, this mental story that he had nothing, even though he had everything he could ever imagine, everything he could ever need, everything he could ever want. He had access to anything at any given time. He just, you know, he always lived in a place of scarcity and that's a mindset. That's a heart set. That's not reality. So what, there are people that have nothing that feel wealthy, and there are people that have everything that feel absolutely broke, and it has nothing to do with what's outside of you. Feeling wealthy has nothing to do with, outside, with, with what's outside of you. It has everything to do with what's locked in your soul, what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your emotions, how you accept yourself, how you embrace yourself, how you trust yourself, how you believe in yourself. That's true wealth, and here's the, the most magical piece, right? That law of attraction thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit's real. So when you feel wealthy, wealth shows up without force. Some it, there'll be some activity. You do you got to give some value in the world. You got to give the very very best of you. But the point is, wealth shows up to someone who feels wealthy inside. Success shows up to someone who feels successful inside. Love shows up for somebody who feels love inside. But when you when you feel hate inside, there's a lot of things that show up to to give you evidence that that hate is real. So is that, is that what you would call the law of attraction then? So when you feel a certain way, that's what's going to show up in your life? Absolutely. Oh, 100%. You're a magnet. Your emotions are a magnet for what you want. Your your thoughts are, are a prayer and your emotions are the magnet, right? The universe is life, God, doesn't matter what the, you call it. To me, it's all the same thing. It's it's that your prayers are answered, right? Whenever you think of whatever you think about and whatever you feel, that shit's coming into your life, right? And, and if it takes... If someone's sitting on, on a poverty mindset with a poverty heart set, money will show up. Money could show up tremendously, but the reason it shows up is to show them that they're feeling like, like poverty and poor in the face of like material and financial wealth. And, and it's, it's, intended, it's intended to show them the inner pain that they can't avoid. And compound it until they're until they're forced to face, you know, their inner demons and and kind of you know switch that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, this you know, I don't like using the words law of attraction, but but we are bringing our circumstances upon us with what we think and what we feel. Absolutely, a hundred percent, only every single time. 
Yeah, I actually, I actually love the law of attraction. I'm a big a fan. I actually call it the law of vibration because we're all vibrating at a very specific frequency based on the thoughts and perceptions and, and sure. what we do in our lives. So would you, would you say that in your opinion, if someone is like, let's say, okay, let, for the, use this business as an example, because, you know, part of this is just growing in, in life itself and they want a promotion or whatever it is, but they're negative about themselves. Yeah. So, so the question is you could still see success, but what, what does that look like exactly when you're negative about yourself, but you have this, I want this, but almost the, I mean, it really imposter syndrome is a good way to kind of, and by the way, what is imposter syndrome before we go? I feel like we said that a few times and just to make sure people know what it is. It Imposter syndrome is like a, an incongruence with what you feel and what's happening outside of you and, and what, you know, what life is showing you. So when you go into a job interview, not a job interview, but you go into a performance review with, you know, and in, in, in I'm, I'm recalling this from corporate and you walk in thinking, I suck. I'm awful. I'm a horrible employee. I failed. And they're like, man, that was the greatest year anybody's ever had, you know, in this, in, in this organization and congratulations, you know, we're blessed to have you. And you're like, no, that can't be true. Get to the bad part. I suck. I get right? that. I get that all the time when, when people, I, I have to review someone They're They're like, what did I do wrong? I'm like, you're fine. Like, I'm just telling you you did a good job. And they're, they're almost like, please, you can't discover who I think I really am. And this front that I've given you this whole time, I just, I'm hoping you don't find it because I'm not this person you think I am. So I recall back in my first corporate managerial uh, position, and this is way back in the early 2000s, it, we, there were, there were a group of managers and we each had a pool of employees and every performance review period, we'd all put our employees together and we'd rack them and stack them. So we'd give them a performance review, you know, based on quality of their work and like how their value alignment with cor corporate yeah. values, right? Yeah. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? The performance versus values. So uh, it, anyway, we, every year we had the same guy on the top of the list and the same guy on the bottom of the list. Like it was, it, it was uncanny. And here's the, the crazy part. The guy up on the top of the list thought he was always on the verge of getting fired. And the guy at the bottom of the list thought he was God's gift. Oh my gosh. And thought we couldn't live without him. And when we started talking with our HR partner about this, she said, listen, this is pretty common, right? People at the bottom of the list, it's a self-inflated sense of self. They're blind to their, their talents. They're blind to really how good they are or how, how, how not good they are. And the guy at the top of the list is blind to his talents, but one is driven and one is paralyzed, but it's still an inflated sense of self at the bottom and an undervalued sense of self at the top. So this shows up everywhere in, you know, in the world, you know, there's people that are highly, highly successful that think that, that, that they're just the biggest ball of shit in the world. They're successful. They're, they're wealthy. They, they've, you know, they've achieved things and they think that, that, that they, they haven't accomplished anything and that they don't matter and they're insignificant and they're inadequate. It's because they're listening to stories in their mind. They're not seeing, they're not listening. They're not paying attention to what's really happening in, in, in their life. Right. They refuse to believe any good news about themselves, any, any good stories. And, and I remember like, so we've got these beliefs. Okay. We, we see the world through our beliefs. Right, your belief becomes your reality. Yeah. Your the world is the world, and we each see it differently because we're seeing it through the lens and through the veil of our beliefs. So, if you believe you see everything in life as flawed, especially yourself, if you see yourself and everything, if you see the world through the belief of everything is perfect, you see perfection wherever you go. You'll see the same world as the person who sees the who who, who you know believes that the world is flawed or whatever. It doesn't matter, but they're seeing the same world, but they're they're interpreting it differently. it differently. They're they're interpreting it differently. They're seeing it differently because they're seeing it through their belief. So so when when you no matter how much you accomplish no matter how much you attain no matter how much you achieve no matter how much you accumulate if you're living with survival stories in your mind and in your body you're never going to escape the survival stories you're never going to escape you're never going to outrun your mind and your emotions they go wherever you go we've made two geographical moves my family moved from Maryland to Oregon and more uh, from Oregon to St. Louis two major corporate 
geographical moves. And one of the reasons we left is, well, let's leave this old life and create a new life. But there's one problem with that. The same people were going to a different geography and you can't outrun yourself. You can't outrun your mind and your body. And there's no amount of money. There's no amount of success. There's no the side, the bigger size trophy. There's nothing. There's, there's nothing outside of you that can take away a feeling that you won't relinquish. There's nothing outside of you that can take away a thought, a harmful thought that you refuse to, sh to shift, that you refuse to give up. If you want to feel broken, if you want to think broken, if you want to feel broken, don't be surprised when nothing, nothing takes that away from you because you're making a choice to have it. You can, you can either, the, the, the ultimate authority that each human being has, the ultimate authority power that a human being has is the power to choose. And you have the power to choose. There's four personal powers that I talk about. All right. Mm -hmm. the, the choice of thought, you choose your thoughts, your choice of emotions, your choice of words, and your choice of actions. You have those four choices and no one can do anything to get you to not do those things if you choose. There's consequences, mm -hmm. but ultimately you get the power to choose your thoughts, your emotions, your words, your actions. No one can do anything about it in the moment. The point being is you can either think about what you want or what you don't want. And whatever you think about, you're attracting, mm -hmm. you're creating in your life. Why would you ever think about what you didn't want? Negative, yeah. Whatever you feel, you attract. You can feel what you want. You can feel what you don't want. You have the power to choose between the two. Why would you ever, ever feel what you didn't want? Why? You, you have full, complete control over your feelings. Nothing is creating that feeling except that thought that you have. Nothing is creating that thought except you. Your words. You, if you ask for what you want, You'll get it. If you don't ask for what you want, you won't. Don't, don't be surprised if you keep your wants and needs a secret and then you don't get what you want and, and then you claim victim, right? Because somebody should have read your mind. No, just tell people what you want. So at the end of this podcast, I'm going to say, hey, I want you to go to my website and I want you to listen to my podcast and I, you know, I want you to, to buy my book and that's because that's what I want. Why would I keep that a secret? The point is, is ask for what you want, right? And, and lastly, and this is, the, the, it's the actions. Like, do you want to call prospects and ask them if they want to work with you? If you do, do it. If you don't, don't. Don't worry about their perception of you. Don't worry about their perspective. Don't worry about their judgment of you. They're going to judge you. They're going to have a perspective. They're going to have an opinion, but that can't hurt you unless you give them permission to hurt you with their judgment. They're not doing it. You are. So anyways, there's, yeah. there's, there's your choices. Uh, first off, awesome. I, I love everything you just said. I mean, that, that really is powerful stuff. And people really should re-listen to that and understand mm -hmm. that. And we've talked about this before. Perception creates your reality. It's just yeah. that simple. But my question for you is, I bet you some people are kind of like, well, hold on a second. So you're talking about how did these people, you know, I, I feel like money, it tends to be the root of what a lot of people want for various reasons, whether sure. it's, you know, whether you're living paycheck to paycheck and you want to get out of it, take care of your family, live a comfortable life, or if you want to be that uber successful or somewhere in the middle, money tends to be a huge, the mm -hmm. most probably driving factor in most people. And even the ones that have achieved it, I guess, how do you achieve that if you're, if you don't think you're good enough to achieve it? You can, you can achieve it from fear or from joy. But the fear, right. eat, the fear almost like cannibalizes you at the end. Absolutely. The end of it. It'll eat yeah. you from the inside out. I mean, I, look, I was, I was working 14, 16 hours a day in jobs that I hated and I made a lot of money, right? My family, my family is not poor <laughs> by any means. We've made a lot of money in our life. I mean, I was, uh, the, uh, the, the story that I shared was, you know, we got, when we got recruited, we were put in the grand, the presidential suite of the grand, the grand Renaissance downtown St. Louis in order to attract us, to bring us here. We got taken care of. Right. So the mm -hmm. point is, is I would do a whole lot of shit that I hated and go <laughs> where I didn't want to go and work for people. I didn't want to work for and be miserable for, for the Holy dollar. Right now, I, I work with who I want to work with. I, I work when I want to work. I do what I want to do. I speak when I want to speak. I, I, I mean, I, 
I, I don't have to do any of that. And I'm making even more money now than I did back then when I, when I hated my life. And I did a lot of things that I hated because I didn't understand myself. My level of self-awareness was low. So there's a lot of ways to make money, right? You can force money to come into your life or you can allow the money to come into your life. You get to choose, right? Fear creates force and joy creates like allowing, right? If I give value, that everyone has a problem that they will pay to have solved. And the problems that when I talk, when I'm talking to someone, if, if I know I can help them with their problem, I, I tell them I can, I can help them. I ask them if they want to work with me. And then if they say, yes, we exchange value and, and there you go. I, I get what I want. They get what they want. I'm happy. They're happy. And no, no exertion is required. I love that. So you've worked with, I mean, I got to imagine hundreds of people at this point, uh, whether they're just starting out in their, you know, their solopreneurship or multi, you know, fortune 500 companies, how, what percentage would you say of them have some sort of, I mean, obviously if you're working with them, there's something going on, but like that real negative and, you know, mindset of the, like themselves, like they are an imposter. They're not good enough to succeed. What, what percentage of them usually have that? Ah, uh, shoot. Early on, when I start to work with someone, probably 80% of them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it, it, it seems like, well, no, it doesn't seem like human beings are pain motivated, right? That's the greatest motivator. When, until there's enough pain, there's no, there's no reason to do something different. There's no reason to make a significant change in your life until there's enough pain for, for most people. You see, can you see that? Yeah, hundred percent. You understand? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I was I would still be working jobs I hated if there wasn't enough. If there the, wasn't that enough, threshold, if yeah. there wasn't enough pain, if if the pain hadn't exceeded my capacity for pain, I would still be in jobs that I hated, doing things that I, I that I hated and I didn't want to do, and and go waking up when I didn't want to wake up and stuff like that with high levels of stress and struggle in my body. I would still be doing that, but the pain exceeded my 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 tolerance. So in that that right there, when when your pain exceeds your tolerance, then you're you're forced. Okay. Do, do I do I increase my threshold for pain or do I just go and find a way to to not have to live in this pain anymore? So so in some people just keep going. They don't think they don't see outside of the, the belief box that they put themselves in. So they just keep going back and trying to sign up for, you know, for the old life because they don't know anything different. But for for some when the pain exceeds that threshold, when it exceeds our pain capacity, then we're saying, okay, I got something wrong. Something, something's not right here. What, what do I have wrong? And, and this is where I got the opportunity. It was almost like um, getting out of my chair and going up to a whiteboard and writing every belief that I've ever believed on a whiteboard and just erasing the whole whiteboard and say, let's start all over. Right. So if I believe that God was angry and punishing and, and punitive and judgmental and uh, all these, if I believe that and, and I'm miserable, then let's get rid of that one. If I believe that making money is hard and it's gotten me here, let's let's wipe that one away. My father told me I have to work hard to make money and the man was trying to rob from me. And, you know, he was you got to go and you got to get benefits and security. And that was his like blue collar mentality and his blue collar beliefs. And that one was making me miserable. So I just wiped that one away and got rid of that. And if your beliefs create your reality and your beliefs create your outcomes and and you see the world through your beliefs, then, then when you form healthier beliefs and higher level beliefs, your world the world that you see rearranges itself around your new beliefs, right? So we can use this to our advantage. It's called Hebb's Law, right? Have you ever heard of Hebb's Law? Uh, no, I don't think I have heard of Hebb's Law. Okay. Uh, Hebb's so, Law. so Hebb's was a psychologist, mm -hmm. and what he found, he's the guy that coined, coined the phrase that uh, cells that fire together wire together, okay? So, so have you ever heard that? Cells that fire Stop, together, wire cells together. Cells that fire together, wire together. You got neurons in your in your brain, neurons in your in, in your your uh, in your your brain, your brain housing group up, up here under underneath your skull. And what what's happened is neuropathways have formed, which are indicative of your beliefs and your perspectives and your experiences. And those neuropathways are keeping you in habitual states of being exactly who you are. And you're seeing the world through those neuro pathways. So if you believe making money is hard, there is a neuro, neuro pathway 
If that is a, a subconscious belief that you hold, then there is a neuro pathway that is formed in your mind, in your, in your brain, that is making that true for you. And it's keeping you stuck in that rut. Now, when you start to rewire and unwind that belief, and you start to look for evidence where that's not true, and you start to maybe examine and explore and study people where, where that's not true, and you start to like really allow this, this new thought, this new belief to penetrate your mind and your body, a new neuro pathway will form and shape. And if you think this, this thought repeated over a, a, a period of time and you cycle through that thought repeatedly, that new belief will build in your brain and your subconscious mind will make that true in your life. It will. Your subconscious mind will create that experience where that old antiquated belief, it's like it doesn't exist anymore. Because your brain just wired to attract an entire different experience. And your subconscious is always attracting your experiences. Okay. This is why our, our thoughts are our prayers and, and the emotions are the, are the magnet. We can rewire our minds to perceive life however we want. But we say, well, that's just the way it is. That's not true. It's just the way it is for you. Because you're wired that way. You can rewire yourself anytime you want. I would, I would encourage you guys, either, either you or, or any listener, start exploring and studying a fellow named Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yes, and, love and Dr. Joe. Listen, I just got back from a one-week workshop, an, a, an intensive workshop down in, we went to Orlando, Florida, and that is game-changing. I saw people get wheeled in in wheelchairs and stand up, right? And because they, because your, your, mind can, your mind can heal your body. Your, what you believe to be true about you right now, about your money, about your relationships, about your health, about your whatever, your diseases, they are wired into your brain. And as you rewire them, those conditions and the way you experience those, those circumstances, they will change in your life only every single time. The question is, will you do the work? Are you open to seeing something that you haven't seen and witnessed up to this point? And are you willing to do the work to create those new neural pathways? Me, I once believed that making money was hard and that you had to really stress and struggle to do so. And now I believe that making money is easy. And both were true because I believe them, right? And this is what Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. But th this stuff is not new stuff. Think and grow rich, the science of getting rich, as a man thinketh, anything by Neville Goddard, Dr. Joe Dispenza, the secret, the strangest secret by Earl Nightingale. They all, parts of the Bible, they all say the same thing. You are creating your own reality, and you are the chooser of your reality. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening because of you. Are you willing to be the creator of your life and not just survive and think that's just the way it is? Oh, my gosh. I love everything you just said. because This is a lot of what we talk about, it too. It's just it, when you talk – and just, just to summarize kind of what he said, because there's a lot there, is basically – you know, your brain's kind of like a computer in, in, in all the terms. And what happens is when you're younger, you develop these programs in your brain. And this is kind of what Doc Dispenza was talking about. And those neural pathways of what you're talking about are the the files in your mm -hmm. in the computer. And if you open those files every single day, that's what you're going to be looking at until you yep. create and save new files. And then you're able to do something with it. Which is unbelievable. I mean, I think it's amazing. I, I love it. And I'm a huge Dr. Uh, Joe Dispenza fan. He actually had a he had the same story. I was listening to him on a, a different show. And he talked about how literally people who are never supposed to walk again, like the doctor said they'll never walk, that all these different things, they go to this, they they go to this seminar, this retreat, they do all of the the rewiring of the brain just from thought, and they're walking at the end of it, which is like shocking to me. I I like, saw it I, with I my even, own. I saw it with my own eyes. I have to go. I need to see. Like, this. like that it's wasn't. Like, it, it, this isn't. And then you know when I presented this, somebody says, "Well, they were staged." No, that's your skepticism. That's your cynicism. You're seeing life through the lens of no hope. You're seeing life through the lens of darkness. You're you're not allowing yourself to have any hope outside of what you already know. You are locked into your small, shrunken, dark bleak despair world like i invite you to a, a, a conversation that that contains more freedom 
and more potential and, and more possibility and, and more personal power that you have the power to change your circumstances. And I know it's scary. And I know that's, I know you don't want to take responsibility for your own life. I know you want to be, feel like, just feel like you're a, a hapless victim of this world, but it's not true. It's true for you because you're choosing it, but you don't have to. I just invite you into a, a conversation that is more expansive and freeing and hopeful. And, and I hope this is really clicking with people. Like if you choose to not believe anything that you don't already believe, you are keeping yourself stuck. Your beliefs got you here. Your beliefs aren't going to create more, more freedom and more happiness in your life. Something has to go if you want more wealth more success and more happiness. You've mm -hmm. got to let this version of you die so that the new one can be born. And that's about your beliefs. Why do you think so? I mean, so I, you know, I work in corporate still, I still have a, you know, a full-time job in corporate uh, tr as a trainer, nonetheless, but every day, every single day, it's like clockwork. You come in and it's, they talk about, Oh, wow, the weather's so bad. Or, Oh yeah, today's Wednesday or today's there. Why is everyone so negative like are we like is, is it are we all indoctrinated at a young age to be these negative people to fall in line with whatever society wants like i guess like why are you said 80 percent of people you work with start out negative and have this negative mindset towards themselves why is that like why are is it something innate is it something that we're taught like how do we like why is this happening yeah so i I think you started to touch on it a little bit ago between the ages of zero and seven you're you're a complete subconscious sponge yes and you you have no ability to discern truth from falsehood. So, and I mean, every single human being, when you're a baby, you are a subconscious sponge. You'll believe anything that anybody tells you. Santa, the, Easter Bunny. The, the, Santa, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, right? Uh, making money is hard. You got to work hard for your money. Marriage is hard, right? You'll believe anything. Like people are out to get you. The world, the 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 world is bleak, right? People are bad. Rich are evil. Um, money is the source of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. Uh, more money, more problems. You'll believe any. You'll believe anything. Your your authority figures, your parents, leaders, pastors, priests, nuns, whatever, anything they lay down, you'll believe, right? Because because I mean, who are you? You're a kid, and these are adults. They've made it, right? <laughs> they've grown up, and they know something, and they've mastered something. And and we want we 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 like want to hang our our hope on, on the people that we love and we respect. So whatever they say, we believe is true. We don't have the ability to, to, to discern truth from non-truth. So when they say making money is hard, you're like, yep, got it. You follow that in your storage unit. And then you start to see the world through that. And, and you like, you, you gotta, you, you gotta go out there and you gotta kill yourself and success is all there is and achievement and attainment and happiness is an illusion, blah, 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 blah. And, and you, you listen to all these things from people that are negative and, and, you know, then the world starts to turn dark and bleak and, and you start to see despair because you're just seeing your life through your beliefs. And then maybe hopefully somewhere, typically, right. Pay attention <laughs> around midlife midlife crisis hello <laughs> somewhere around midlife you say well that first half of my life sucked <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> let me let me figure out what what worked and what didn't work and some people are like you know what that first half sucked so let me try to do even more of what sucked like let me go out and spend more money. Let me go out and get a different wife. Let me go out and 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 buy a different car. Let me go out and get a face job. Let me go out and get a whatever. And you just like you're you are you are you are trying to there's there's angst in you. There's there's mental and emotional angst in you and you're still trying to solve it through external circumstances. But there's some people that take inventory and say, "Well, that sucked. What do what do I have wrong?" Like, what am I seeing that's that's creating this this conflict? And those are the kind of people that show up in my masterminds. Those are the kind of people that show up in my intensives, in my retreats. They're like, I'm not where I want to be. And I haven't figured out how to, how to get rid of this, this internal conflict and create an inner wealth myself. So, so let me, let me go and learn from someone who has made that shift and see what they say. And, and the right people don't come to me and then dispute what I have to say. The right people come and they listen because that's what we do as coaches, right? So I have, a, I have mentors. You go and you, you, like, you find someone who already has what you want and you listen to them. 
and they believe certain things. So their beliefs have gotten them there. So it's probably in your best interest. It might be in your best interest to give them a little credibility and give their beliefs a little credibility mm -hmm. because their beliefs have created their, their realities. Your beliefs have created yours. So if you're not where you want to be and they are where you want to be, it's their beliefs that got them there. Like choose to believe that. Mm -hmm. You, you might you might just find yourself with their, their circumstance too because beliefs create reality. Reality doesn't create beliefs. So typically right around midlife, I mean it's 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 not a it's not a midlife crisis. It's a, it's a midlife calibration. there's a there's a great book um, by a fellow named Dr. or I'm sorry, Father Richard Rohr and it's called Falling Upward. And it's it's a little on the Christian side, but I, I'd say it's it's more ah, kind of Christian science. But um, he says we do we we live the, the the first half of our life the exact opposite way of the way that's going to make make us happy. So then somewhere around midlife we make that switch. We switch out everything. We do everything the like almost the exact opposite, yeah. and that's where we found find our happiness. So we fall upward, right? As we as we go through our lives, the first half of our life, it's all about about bumping into shit and you know getting bruised and damaged and bloody. And then we're like, well, you know, what you take inventory? What didn't work? What did work? Let me stop doing what didn't work and let me do more of what did work. And that's when we start to live like life on our own terms and we get to enjoy life. So my life fell apart at 43, right in that like midlife calibration point, mm -hmm. right? But but we get to choose. We can, we, but we can, there's a lot of people that just go right back to the well, right? Go right back to the well that they know, the poison well that they know and expect different results. But I hope that answers the question. That's why about 80% of people, because when you know that you're not where you want to be, at some point you get to choose to, you know, to try to figure out that nugget, that wisdom, that knowledge, that belief that's going to, it's going to set you free. I love what you said about beliefs create reality and reality doesn't create beliefs. I think that's, that's such, right. I th and I think right now in society, we have this, you know, I mean, and obviously some people have a, you know, a worse upbringing than others. We can obviously, you know, that's an obvious statement, but it's every, you know, there's this victim mentality of there's nothing I can do about it. This mm -hmm. is my, this is my life. This is my situation. I can't do anything about it. And it's like, well, if you just reverse the model and it's, it, if you don't believe that, then you can create a different reality and, and people aren't you know, brought up to feel that way. They're not brought up to see that. And so I think that's a lot of where this kind of stems from is just people not taking stock in their lives and trying to focus on the external world materialism, you know, just trying to make as much money as possible and not realizing that you don't need to work a hundred hours a week to make yeah. six figures, which is like what, like we were taught in school. And, sure. um, you know, so we've, we've given a lot of unbelievable information here, you know, and you, and you, obviously you've done this, you've turned your life around, you lost a hundred pounds, which I think people still want to know about, but it's, what are some things that you would tell someone? Like, what are your like top, I don't know, two or three pieces of advice. If someone is struggling, they don't, you know, they feel that imposter syndrome. There's, they feel that like, just, I'm not good enough, or I'm not where I want to be. How do I change from a negative to a, uh, um, a positive mindset? What are some things you would tell them to start doing in their life today to help at least get the, get the ball rolling? Yeah. And, and, and this is probably the hardest one of them all is, is sit still without distraction. Mm, that's like who, who can do that close your eyes shut off the lights <laughs> maybe like literally sit in a place of silence and stillness for a prolonged period of time and see what's happening in your mind and body and pay attention start paying attention to your inner world instead of trying to like distract yourself so when i was eating a lot when i was drinking a lot when i was um I don't know, watching freaking 18 hours of, of football on a Sunday when, you know, when I was overworking and when I was whatever, I mean, when I was in that place, it was all about distraction. It was all about trying to avoid the mental and emotional chaos that, that I was experiencing inside. And as soon as you start to, you know, your brain starts to throw up that, you know, the insecurity and the inadequacy and the insignificance, and you start to feel a little like internal chaos. It's like, that's when you get up and you go to the freaking snack closet. And that's when you hit the ice cream and that's when you grab another beer. And that's when you, that's when you crack another round. And that's when you, that's when you turn on television and distract yourself for a while, right? Because you don't want to face what's happening inside of you. So the easiest way, probably the hardest way, but the easiest way is to finally like 
Start it's, facing yourself in silence. In would silence you, and stillness. Would you say I, meditation I, is? Would yeah. you say this or meditation, or is this better than meditation? I think it's all. It's. I think it's all part of it. Okay. It, it really is. So I. I mean, I, I meditate every day, multiple times a day, but I also just sit still and contemplate for multiple times a day too. So I don't live a super like. Uh, uh, a hustle, hustle whore, grind guru life, right? So my life is not about like just activity. My life is about joy and it's happiness and peace and, and inner prosperity, which creates external prosperity. I mean, inner wealth creates external wealth. It's, it's about, it's about loving hard. It's about being loved hard. It's about, you know, it's about just, nah, just a sucking the marrow out of out of the joy of every moment. So and I can't emphasize that enough. That is what you want all this money for. That and and look, I want to I want to make sure materials and money are awesome. Yes. Like like I got nice things. I love nice things. I buy nice things. I make a good income. <laughs> I have nice things. Money is is important, but it's not survival. Money is not your lifeblood. And that's a lot of people are in a chase feeling that money is their survival, right? But I, I love nice things and I love money. But the point is, is realize that the reason that you want all this stuff is so that you can experience peace, love, and joy. And you can have that now without those things. And when you do have peace, love, and joy in your life right now, those things come easier. They're not harder to get when you're when you're a peaceful warrior. They're not harder to get. They're easier to get because everyone wants to be around someone who lives in a state of peace, and love and joy and expansion and happiness and instead of chaos and stress and struggle. You can feel that shit in somebody's body. Tell me, tell me there's there's not people in the world right now that you stand next to and you're you're uncomfortable and you can't be in their presence. You can't be in their aura for a for a sustained period of time because it just doesn't feel good. That's that's a, an aura full of stress and struggle and conflict. And you know, they're, they're takers and they're just out to get you. Right. The point is, is everyone wants to be around someone who's a giver, who's mm -hmm. a, you know, who's, who's, who will accept you for exactly who you are. And the greatest acronym on the face of the planet is love letting others voluntarily evolve, right? A non-judgmental a, a person who's non-judgmental and who's, who's accepting and who's inviting and who's encouraging and inspiring and just wants the best of you for yourself and whatever you want for you. I want that for you too. This is what magnetizes wealth and joy and love and peace into your life. I love that. So, you're, so your number, your your first and I guess t easiest slash hardest thing would be kind of sit still and basically self reflect on what's going on in your mind. Yeah, and get radically on the the. It's hard because human beings don't like to be honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. You'll lie to yourself. You literally lie to yourself while you're sitting there. It's like, why are you doing? That's that? right. That's right. What What am I scared of? Like, ask yourself, what am I scared of? What am I running from? What am I afraid of? Like, what, what, what don't I want people to find out about me? What, what happens if it, if it all goes away? What happens if I lose my fortune? What happens if my wife leaves me? Right? And start to face this stuff. Like, what, do you, what is your identity wrapped up in? If your identity is wrapped up in wealth, your success, your, your family, your career, your title, your health, if your identity is wrapped out, wrapped in these things, life, life is a little bit of a roller coaster, right? The economy goes up, the economy goes down, right? The results, our business results go up and our business results go down. Our, uh, some days we're, we're, we're in a great place with our spouse and some days maybe our spouse isn't real happy and we're not in, in as great. So circumstances change. And if your emotion, mental and emotional state changes like those circumstances, your identity is wrapped up in those circumstances. Detach and detangle your identity from things outside of you and, and like see that you are what's happening in your mind and body. And you can like start to clear that shit out and, and like wake, uh, awaken from the inside instead of, instead of needing the outside to rearrange itself so you can feel good. I hope that really helps. Guys, the greatest work that I ever did was was I was molested when I was a child multiple times over over a period of time. The the greatest thing I ever did was face that. Was face that 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 fear, face that the fact that's why I abused my body because I felt my body was worthless because I was young 
And I had adopted the belief that my body was worthless. So then I treated it like it was worthless. <laughs> it's not a coincidence that someone who feels that their body is worthless is treating their body like it's worthless. That's It's just like your beliefs yeah. create your reality, right? And it's facing that, like, why do I feel like my body's worthless? Why do I feel like I have no talent? Why do I feel like everybody's significant except for me? Why do I feel broken? Where did these stories come from? And start like doing the work of, of really understanding yourself and your experience and your life and your talents and understand it from the inside out, not the outside in. What would you say to – I, I want to be you know mindful of the time. What, what, what would you say – to someone who, you know, is, let's say they are doing this. They you know they meditate every day. They, they are self-reflecting. They, they really, you know, maybe they have a mantra, maybe they have a vision board, maybe they have, they're trying to be positive. Right. And again, mm -hmm. they're, they're not going to succeed every day, but they're, they're, they're making that a habit and they're yeah. doing it for months at a time and they're nothing has changed in their life. Um, and maybe they've done some different actions to kind of, they know they've, oh, I've done this, I did this, but I just don't see any results. What would you say to that person? Cause I feel like that's where a lot of people stop is like, okay, I did it for a month. I don't see any, I don't see any results. What do I, like, this isn't working. This, this woo woo, you know, positive self doesn't work. Okay. You know, Mike and Scott were wrong, you know, like, but what do you say? Yeah, right. People? We're like, it's right. been, you know, it's been a few, it could be even six, let's say six months. They've been meditating every day. They're, they started the new gym routine. They're, they're being more positive, doing positive self-talk and they're doing some actions that help, you know, I mean, that they probably should be doing. Yeah. And it's not working. What would you say to those people? So check this out. When I lost, it took me a couple of years to lose 100 pounds, right? Which is and amazing, by the way. Which is amazing, by the way. Thank so. you. It, it, it was awesome. Here, here's the keys to to losing a lot of weight: move your ass and stop putting food in your mouth. Right? Stop yeah. putting as much food that's, in your mouth. There, there you go. That, 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 that's that's what you need to know. Anyway, um, and and I, that was that was like tongue in cheek. But every day, I would I would like walk into my my bathroom and I would look myself in the eyes. And you know who I would see every single day when I looked at myself in the eyes? The same person I saw yesterday. And, and the next day, I would look and I would see the same person that I saw yesterday. And, and the next day, I would look and see the same person I saw yesterday. And this went on for years. And over the course of a couple of years, I lost 100 pounds. But every day, I saw the same I've person the that same I saw person. yesterday. Yeah, Guys, these little small shifts that are compounded over a period of time, you might not even know that they're, they're, they're shifting because you're living inside of your mind and your body. And there's such subtle shifts that compounded over a long period of time. They're, 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 they're moving mountains, but it's not going to feel like it. Right. Go look at, I, I don't know why this metaphor just came up. Go look at the Rocky mountains. At some point, the Rocky mountains didn't exist. And every year they grow by an inch or two or something like that. Did you know that? I did not know. At some point, the Rocky Mountains didn't exist. And every oh, yeah. year they grow, every year they grow a little bit. And you can't see them change, can you? No. No, because it's subtle. This is what happens when when you look to improve by one percent every single day. Right? There's a another great book. There's another, another uh valuable uh book for your uh, for your library. It's called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. It's a great book. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, I, it was one of the first books I read on my journey. You're not going to see tremendous transformation from a, from day to day. And in fact, if you're, if you're only doing it for the outcome, then you might be doing it for the wrong reason. Do it for the joy of the activity. Find joy in the activity. And anything you practice over a long period of time, you will get better at. Can we agree with, can we agree on that? Anything that you practice over a sustained period of time, you will improve in 100%. meditation. It's not a meditation perfection. It's a meditation practice. This is something I've been at this for seven years. There's a difference between someone who's meditated every day, multiple times for seven years who, and someone who's meditated for a month. You can feel it in their, in, in their presence. All right. And I, there's people that I go stand next to and I'm like, holy shit, how do I, how do I, how do I get to feel like that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause there's, cause maybe, maybe they've done more work than I have and maybe they're in a, in a more peaceful and, 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 you know, pleasant state than I'm in, but it's like, how do I do that? Holy crap. What's your secret? You can feel the difference between, between people's like magnetism and their, you know, their repulsiveness. The point is, is 
do work to calm your mind and to, to quiet your mind and to resolve emotional distress and trust that over a long period of time with of sustained activity, not just chasing the outcome, but just chasing the joy in the activity. And you'll find that people will start noticing it in you. You won't even notice it, but people will start noticing it in you. Right. Have you ever, have you ever experienced that, that, that you, you're just living your same life and somebody says you've changed a hundred percent. And sometimes, but, for, sometimes for the worst too, like sometimes when you're sometimes, you're, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. But, but the point is, is you might not even notice the subtle changes. Cause you see yourself but, every day. It's like, you're yeah. not going to notice that. Sure. You're feeling the same thing. These, these are subtle shifts, right? I love that. Um, Mike, tell people where they can find you and what, what's coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I got a couple ways. Uh, my, I have a podcast. It's on uh, all major platforms. It's it's titled Lead, Love, Profit, Play. Uh, but if you just put my name in there, it'll pop up. Um, I'm pretty proud of the podcast. Uh, 39 countries, six continents, 39 countries, 660 cities around the world. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's cool just to know that that your voices. You know, at one point I felt like I was I was worthless and I, I didn't matter. And now, like m- people around the world listen to my voice, is pretty cool. Um, so that's what. And I share. Uh, I just launched tomorrow. Uh, the 72nd episode will, will will launch. So I've been at this thing for a while. Um, I'm excited about that. The point is in, in lead, love, profit, play. It really is about having it all without and and, and achieving success without the stress. Okay, um, my website is innerwealthglobal.com, and on there you'll find uh, I do free free webinars, free training. I've got one coming up on January seventh uh, at ten a.m. Central. Uh, free webinars we 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 host every couple of weeks. I have an intensive workshop, a three day intensive workshop, and I'm calling it my three by three, um, three days of intensive workshop days and followed by three months of accountability and, and collaboration. So uh, that'll be coming up over the next, uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and yeah, uh, those are the, the two best ways to find me. I'll, I'm also a published author on Amazon. If you, if you type in my name, my book, the imposter in charge comes up and I've got another, another media, kind of like a, another book that's on my website called the prosperity principles that, that I believe is up there accessible for free right now. So, uh, that's that's where you can find me, and that's what I have to offer. Awesome, and all of that stuff will be in the show notes. Links available, so make sure you check that out before you exit the show today. Uh, Mike, any final thoughts before we head out today? You're better than you think you are. You're more than you think you are. You're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. There's nothing wrong with you. When you change the stories in your mind and you change the thoughts and the thoughts in your mind and the feelings in your body, your entire life will shift. It's just a question of, do you, uh, do you fully surrender to the fact that you have created all of your outcomes and all of your circumstances in your life? And unless you change, nothing else is going to change. Uh, things don't happen to you. They happen because of you. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.